Welcome back. In this video, we are going to discuss about cervicitis as a continuation of a series infections of individual pelvic organs. Before understanding cervicitis, let us look into the anatomy of cervix. Cervix is the lowermost part of the uterus. So guys, you can see here, the uterus being divided into three parts, the body, isthmus and the cervix. And this cervix is situated between the histological internal os and the external os. This external os will be continuing as the vagina. So you see it is extending from the internal os and external os opening in the vagina. Cervix has two parts, ectocervix and endocervix. It, the ectocervix is the one which can be seen during the gynecological examination. As it is continuing as the vagina, you, it is visible. Whereas the endocervix is the inner part of the cervix, it forms a canal which is connecting the vagina to the uh, uterus. So you guys, you can see here, this endocervix forming a canal which is connecting the vagina to the uterus. The objectives of this session will be acute cervicitis and chronic cervicitis. Cervicitis. The term cervicitis will be reserved to the infections of endocervix. So the infection of this endocervix is also including the glands and the stroma. So guys, you can see here this endocervix, it has been infected here. Now, how do you differentiate this endocervix from ectocervix? The endocervix will be lined with glandular epithelium, whereas ectocervix by squamous epithelium. So the glands and the stroma of this endocervix will have inflammation. There will be infection present in these uh, glands and stroma of endocervix. This infection could be acute, resulting in acute cervicitis. And infection could be of a chronic type, resulting in chronic cervicitis. Acute cervicitis in that the endocervical infection will follow an acute cause like the childbirth, abortion or any operation on the cervix. The causative organisms for acute cervicitis are pyogenic. 50% they are pyogenic. The commonest type the organisms are aerobes. In the pyogenic aerobes are more commonest types. The gram-positive organisms like Staphylococcus and gram-negative like E. coli, Pseudomonas, Klebsiella and Neisseria gonorrhea will play a role in causing acute cervicitis. The anaerobes such as the gram-positive anaerobic Streptococcus, Clostridium welchi, Clostridium tetani. We also have the gram-negative anaerobes playing a role mainly the bacteroids in that the bacteroids fragilis will be the commonest one the other common pathogens will include the gonococcus chlamydia trachomatis trichomonas bacterial vaginosis mycoplasmas and human papilloma virus so the bacterial vaginosis is also a type of vaginal inflammation which is caused by the overgrowth of these bacteria which are found in the vagina. There will be a disequilibrium between the good and the bad bacteria. So guys, you can see, uh, we'll try to make another video in which we discuss each of these cervicitis. Cervicitis because of gonorrhea, uh, like the Neisseria gonorrhea or cervicitis because of chlamydia trachomatis. All those seven types of cervicitis we'll discuss in the next video. In this, let us see about the acute and chronic cervicitis. So you just have to know the causative organisms Moving on, how this cervicitis is occurring? The organisms, like we mentioned above, will gain the entry into the glands of the endocervix. So guys, you can see here, the glands will be infected first. And then after entering the glands, they will produce the inflammatory changes. The infection could be localized to the cervix or it can be localized to the endocervix or it can move upwards. And then it can enter into the tube or it can also enter sideways into the parametrium. 
Moving on to the clinical features of acute cervicitis. So if a cervicitis is of an acute type, the cervix is going to be tender on touch or by movement. The cervix will look edematous, congested. So it's going to be swollen. It is congested and mucopurulent discharge can also be seen th uh, escaping through the external loss. So you can see this mucopurulent discharge escaping this discharge okay this is a mucopurulent discharge being inflamed we can see the swelling redness and the discharge in acute type of cervicitis there is edema that is swelling congestion redness and mucopurulent discharge prognosis what can the prognosis be for acute cervicitis it can either resolve completely the cervix can become healthy again or the infection can spread into the adjacent structures like moving on to the fallopian tubes or entering sideways into the parametrium or it can turn out to be a chronic cervicitis which we are going to discuss in the upcoming slides. So guys the treatment for acute cervicitis will be the high vaginal and endocervical swap. First what you have to do uh, first the antibiotics should be prescribed that is the first thing. Apart from that before understanding uh, like before concluding it to be the cervicitis you need to do the vaginal and endocervical swap should be taken for the bacteriological identification and also for the drug sensitivity test. So based on this bacteriological identification and knowing what type of the bacteria it is and the appropriate, so if it is Neisseria gonorrhea or if it is bacteria, whatever, okay, whichever the causative organism is there, the appropriate antibiotic to that causative organism should be prescribed. Moving on to the chronic cervicitis. So now what is a chronic cervicitis? The chronic cervicitis is the commonest lesion which is found nowadays in the women in the gynac OPDs. The most commonest infection is chronic cervicitis. It is following either an acute attack or it could be chronic from the beginning. So sudden acute attack turning into the chronic cervicitis or from ages ago the women is having chronic cervicitis. Now let's see what's happening here. Who is causing this chronic cervicitis? The endocervix will act as a potential reservoir for all these uh, microorganisms. Like we mentioned before, we, it's just like a summary. Again, here in chronic, the Neisseria gonorrhea, the Chlamydia trachomatis, human papilloma virus, these micro mycoplasmas and the bacterial vaginosis will play a role in causing chronic cervicitis. The pathology, what's happening here? The mucosa and the deeper tissues. Now here what's happening? The mucosa and also the deeper tissues are going to be congested. Fibrosis occurs. So there is, since it's chronic, there is scarring. And then the infiltration of the leukocytes and the plasma cells will occur at that site. Since it is an inflammation and it is of a chronic type, we have the leukocytes playing a role here and the glands will be hypertrophied with the increased secretory activity. So we also get to see the discharges, increased mucopurulent discharges. It is because the glands are hypertrophied. They are increased in size and also the activity, secretory activity is increased. Some of the gland mouths are closed by fibrosis or the plux of the desquamated epithelial cells resulting in Nabothian cyst. So guys, what's happening here? This is the, this is the gland and this is the mouth of the gland opening into the cervix. So these glands are, the mouth of these glands is being closed. It is being closed either by fibrosis, a scar formation or also the desquamated epithelial cells. Because of this closing, what's happening? It is forming the cyst, the, uh, the fluid is being accumulated here and resulting in cyst. It is not coming out. The, the discharges are not occurring. As a result, the accumulation occurs resulting in Nabothian cyst of the cervix, which you can appreciate here. This cyst and also it's going to appear like this on the examination. 
uh, so what they're saying the discopated epithelial cells will cause the retention cyst also known as nabothenian follicles or the nabothenian cyst of the cervix thus in fact it should be called the chronic endocervicitis as the ectocervix is being protected so most everything what's happening all the things are happening to this endocervix the upper part okay this is the endocervix it is because it is lined by the glandular epithelium whereas the lower part the ectocervix the down one what did we say it is lined by the stratified squamous epithelium this stratified squamous epithelium is going to uh, protect the ectocervix you getting it okay now here moving on uh, there is also associated lacerated and everted endocervix the so called eversion or ectropion so guys what's happening here there is laceration and everted endocervix now this endocervix is going to be everted resulting in ectropion so you can see the eversion of this endocervix resulting in the ectropion you understanding guys this is the endocervix this is the ectocervix this endocervix is hanging on to the ectocervix resulting in the ectropion it is coming out here okay clinical features there may not be any symptoms as it is an accidentally being discovered during the gynecological examination the excessive mucoid discharge at times the mucopurulent is a predominant symptom so in the chronic cervicitis we have the mucopurulent discharges history of the contact bleeding can also be present now on examination the cervix will be tender to touch like acute even in chronic the cervix is going to be tender to touch as well as the movement whereas the speculum examination will reveal the mucoid or mucopurulent discharges escaping out through the external cervical os there is also the enlargement congestion and ectropion of the cervix the associated ectopy can also be present so this is a ectropion with a unilateral tear of the cervix you can also see the tear happening in the cervix and this is the representation of the ectropion treatment for chronic cervicitis the cervical scrape cytology is done to exclude the malignancy it is mandatory prior to any therapy given you have to perform the scrape cervical scrape you're taking a part of the cervical tissue and then you're doing the sampling so that you can rule out if there is any malignancy there is no place of antimicrobial therapy except in cases of gonococcal or if there is a proved case of chlamydial infection or bacterial vaginosis only in these cases you can give the therapy whereas in other things there is no place for this microbial therapy the disease should uh, now the disease tissue of the cervix should be performed by these procedures electro or diathermy cauterization laser or cryo surgery well, let us see what is all this so the diseased tissue is being destroyed here in diathermy cauterization they are going to uh, use this uh, like the diathermy cot uh, the cervical cautery what do they do in this they will remove the top layers of the cell from the cervix using a heated ball tipped probe now you can see the heated ball tipped probe here using this probe they are removing the diseased tissue and then this is the healthy one now in cervix uh, cervical cryo surgery in cryo surgery what do they do uh, first they are going to cold this making it cold using the compressed nitrogen gas it is being flowed through the cryo probe it is making the metal cold enough to freeze and destroy the abnormal cervical tissue now you can see the compressed nitrogen gas using this they are making the cryo probe very cold and then they are going to destroy this diseased tissue the cervix as it is views through the speculum you can see this uh, cervix being damaged with the damaged tissues and everything using this probe you are going to destroy the tissues the, the cryo probe is used to freeze and destroy the abnormal tissue 
then we also have the ectropion being corrected by the deep linear burns and also the coincidental ectopy may be coagulated coagulation cold coagulation can be done uh, in this uh, what do you do you ab ablation of ablation can be done so in ablation what you're doing you're removing the uh, lesions of the cervix and you can also prevent the cervical cancers by this method hope the treatment is clear uh, thank you and if you like my video hit the like button and subscribe